what you're saying, Jackie, as far as the dollars and, and staying on top of time and, and the uh, the project costs and uh, the contract time and so on and so forth. And I would imagine the same thing uh, with regards to uh, the architecture and uh, making uh, changes uh, to uh, what would you what's uh, what do they call those uh, cha uh, change orders? Okay, mm -hmm. uh, based on uh, uh, something that uh, has come up. And again, if the employees aren't there to uh, help you implement uh, that change and so forth, it puts everyone else behind the, the eight ball, is it not? Our industry, whether it's in architecture or in construction, is deadline driven. Mm -hmm. um, and in many cases, projects have uh, penalties in them uh, that result from delays. And if people aren't there to perform the work, then there are delays that are going to be forthcoming, and that could really result in very significant problems for the project uh, within our own organization and within the in our profession it's a collaborative and integrated process with a lot of people working together on on many projects in bringing the skills and and uh, uh, tools to the to the delivery of that project so if you're not there something isn't happening and if it isn't happening it's going to have an impact down the road Mike, we, we talked our first session. Uh, what's the reason for uh, the shortage right now uh, with regards to uh, in the trades and having uh, the qualified, skilled people? Um, the, the shortage is kind of twofold. First of all, it, it's it was the economy um, kind of had turned down. Um, a lot of companies cut back uh, in their employment and they cut back their hiring practices. Um, as and so at the same time in the school settings in the career tech settings we lost a lot of programs um, part of it is perception that the industry was dying um, and so the it wasn't something that students wanted to enter at that time uh, as we move forward um, you know there, there's now a gap um, in the number of students in in the pipeline uh, through high school and a company that's trying to catch up and also the aging workforce i think uh in that process um, so in a sense what we're saying to these kids right now as they listen to us the opportunity is there it's there and, and take advantage of it by again uh following uh, the prescribed course and uh, making sure that uh, you are you've got that uh, driver's license so uh, you are prompt and when you leave school you're going to get a pretty good recommendation from a teacher and if you're going to go on to college you know, make the right choices there also. Right. If I could add to that, you know, architecture as a as a profession is is the canary in the coal mine. If we're healthy and successful, then the construction industry that succeeds us in building uh, the buildings that we design is going to be successful. In the period between 2008 and 2011, the uh, design field saw a reduction of nearly 25% um, of the professionals in the, in the profession. Uh, at the same time, there was a lot of negative PR relative to future careers in architecture and design. And as a result, not as many students enrolled in, uh, in those programs. So we're coming to a, a turning point in the, in, the, uh, in the economy, and we're starting to see an increase in potential for hiring uh, there's a little bit of reluctance yet because of the economy, but I think it's going to that's going to explode very shortly, and the work that's going to have to get done will be done by a lot of new people, and those new people are you people that are in school right now, that are um, beginning to develop your career objectives and looking for those things that you're passionate about to be involved with. And there is going to be a great need and demand for architects and designers uh, in, in the next few years that will uh, need, that, uh, need numbers to fulfill the obligations that we have. The opportunities out there. Outlook looks good. Okay, we, we've asked ourselves a couple questions here. Let's turn the question over to our students now. So Glenville, we have you on our monitor right now. So let's take two questions from your site and then we'll move on to uh, Jefferson County JVS. So students, we'd like you to be close to a microphone, introduce yourself with your first name if you would please, and ask your question, then put your microphone back on mute. Questions from Glenville? Hi, the 
Is it green? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. This is, this, this is Junius Sharp, a ninth grader at Glenville Academy. We're going to ask this one right here. What is the starting salary and salary range for a construction worker? Okay, well, that's an interesting um, question. Money right okay. off the bat. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> question, good All question. All right, here we go. And you've got the accountant to answer it. I know, right? Um, it. I am going to say this. If you are part of a skilled trade, your salaries have already been defined for you uh, by the agreement. Um, typically, those can range from 16 to $20 for an apprentice, and they go up from there from 20 to 30 depending on the trade that you belong to as well as where you're at in that trade as far as experience. Um, if you bring it back to the administration side and we're talking about someone like myself in accounting, depending on the vitality of your company, you're going to range from somewhere between $35,000 to $50,000 salary a year. Um, if you're a project manager, you're probably going to be somewhere around the ballpark of fifty to 70000 so again, three good salaries. Uh, Absolutely. And, and coming as an apprentice now, remember coming out of high school then as an apprentice and making $16 an hour, it's an excellent place to start. It is. And, and the program actually moves uh, fairly quickly. I mean, about every six months to a year, you're looking at some type of increase in salary. So you will move up fairly rapidly. And if you put the time and the effort into it, you will actually see yourself growing as an individual and also growing in the union as well. Good question, Glenville. Another question for us. Thank you. Hi, my name is Malcolm Clark. I'm a senior at Glenville High School, and I want to know what is the biggest changes in the field of construction that I have seen, I mean, that you can see, that you have seen. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll take it back a little bit more to the money side is not necessarily uh, my construction company is a general contractor so we hire subs and suppliers underneath us to do the, the specialized work such as plumbers HVAC electrical um, for examples uh, when we hire those individuals because of the economy and how badly it has uh, been affected by everybody uh, they might not be able to financially support doing the job that would normally be within their scope they might not be financially be able to uh, do that so I, I look at that situation and go is there a way that we can work together and collaborate some type of an agreement to get their skilled workforce out on the job and still financially be able to help them along the process as well so that's kind of one of the big changes without getting too technical on you um, but it is an important one as well and it will continue to happen that way let me let me add to that um, the technology changes that have occurred both in the architectural uh, component of of the construction industry along with the building component has been the advent of uh, the integration of computer design into the construction process uh, most recently in the last few years the development of something called BIM which stands for building information modeling which allows the designer to design the building within the computer and then to be able to allow the contractor and constructors to build the building from that computer. Shop drawings are created directly out of the model. Uh, material takeoffs are created directly out of the model. So uh, estimating is affected and project schedules are created based on that and all of those things derive from this building information model system and that has been a will continue to grow as a, a tool that will be used more regularly in the field and by contractors whether they're in HVAC or general trades or uh, any other uh, component of the construction industry so technology in a sense is really the driving force of, of many of these changes thank you Glenville we'll come back to you uh, let's go to uh, Jefferson County JVS now for a couple questions yes my name is Matt McMahon I'm a senior at Jefferson JVS I was wondering if you could elaborate more on becoming a journeyman on the job uh, yeah <laughs> 
Um, the union, depending on how you want to go forward and which one, and I'll just take the laborers union for instance. Um, if you want to become a laborer, you need to go down to the union hall, which there is one in Cleveland here, and you'll discuss the apprenticeship program and you'll actually sign up for it. You'll go through uh, training as far as in classroom training. You will have books as well. Um, they will give you some type of homework assignment, I assume. And you'll also get on-the-job experience, which is really critical. And you'll be working with uh, a bunch of different contractors to see how each individual does it and runs their job sites. So um, really with that, that's probably the, the most I can elaborate on that. And if I'm not mistaken, based on the different trades, it's a, it's a different period of time. Usually sure. it, usually it's four years, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. but there are some a little bit shorter, some maybe yeah. a little longer. Each each agreement is, a, is slightly different, so it will just depend on, again, whether you want to be a mason or a laborer or a carpenter, and you'll just have to discuss that with them. But they all are usually between two and four years. And does the union, or I should say the employer, then uh, pays for that, or is that going to come out of... Uh, the employee's pocket? Um, well, when you become part of the union, you will uh, be start working for an employer and they will take out dues and fringes that are going to pay for you to be in this program. And so as it gets funded back to the union and they essentially fund you. So yes, the employer technically pays for that. And, and the classroom, there's so many hours, if I'm not mistaken, required hours and yeah. then the on the, on the job mm -hmm. uh, Hands on. I'm not exactly sure uh, specifically what what it would be and exactly how to give you that information without you actually speaking directly with the union hall. Yeah, I'm, I'm chances uh, are you could probably uh, maybe Glenn can elaborate. Help me out if I'm not doing it right. That's also That's a good segue. Mike probably <laughs> can as well. Oh, okay. uh, and there are probably 34 different building trade uh, unions uh, which provide career opportunities. Um, Jacqueline talked about uh, labor, but again, carpentry, sheet metal, uh, asbestos removal, uh, there's uh, elevator operators um, and, 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 you know, trades, if you will. And so there's about 34 uh, trades, each having their own set of defined um, requirements in terms of uh, what educational standards, number of hours you actually need to be on an apprentice. Um, and an apprentice is, again, the entry level uh, process for these skilled trades. And they've gone through a process of the Department of Labor that defines um, their craft, their trade, and exactly what uh, skills the, they'll be taught um, and learn over a period of anywhere from maybe most are probably three to four year apprenticeship programs, or maybe others that are less than, and some might be as many as five years uh, before you actually reach the journeyman rate. And typically, it's every six months you'll get a increase in pay. So. On average, probably to suggest that a $16, $17 an hour is probably the uh, initial entry starting pay for a, a starting apprentice uh, all the way through a three to four year process where you may get a 50, 60 cent raise every six months and then you'll start your entry level journeyman uh, status which might average $25 an hour and then again you'll continue to get increases uh, typically on an annual basis. Um, the other aspect, and I'll let Mike talk a little bit more about how this uh, correlates back to the vocational uh, training schools, but the other piece, and there's a stigma around construction that says most of the construction workers uh, is, is actually work that's you know, on a highway or being dirty and grimy, but there's also another business side of opportunity in the construction management field, uh, which is applicable for HR, for accounting, uh, information technology, supervision, um, and, and other administrative opportunities. So it's not just that construction is uh, uh, defined for working out in the elements of cold and hot and you know with your hands where you're actually wearing a tool belt. That's one aspect of the construction industry. Uh, the other one which I think uh, might be as equally appealing to many of you is that actual that office and business opportunity uh, that uh, uh, I think as Judd was saying correlates very nicely uh, with um, uh, an academic preparation and in the field in which Jacqueline is involved with uh, HR and uh, accounting. So Mike, I don't know if you wanted to speak to the trade part as well. Yes. Yeah. Well, and, and probably the, uh, the road to the, becoming a journeyman in any of the trades is first getting in the door. 
is probably the biggest challenge. Um, and that's where you can start today in high school. Um, you, you have to build that application, build that resume, and uh, that's an, a very, very important piece. Um, again, a lot of students get those, act, or those technical skills in the high school programs, but they don't know how to sell those, tra sell those skills in the application process um, and in the interview process if they get in the door. And so um, while you're in school today, build those, those, those components to that resume. Participate in your Skills USA events at the local level and, and beyond. Uh, participate in certification opportunities, your 10-hour OSHA card, things such as that. Get those things done uh, now so that you can put those on the resume to separate you from the other person. Once you get in the door, then it's, it kind of moves itself. And keep that driver's license valid and <laughs> show Correct. up on time. Yes. <laughs> All right, super. Uh, another question for our, for us, uh, Jefferson County. Hi, my name's Corey. Uh, I was wondering, what kind of education would you be looking for for a construction manager? Anyone? Well, I'll go for it. Um, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Construction, first of all, construction manager is, is really experiential to a large degree. Um, you know, you're going to be looking at perhaps an engineering background. Um, there are construction management programs, for example, Kent State and Bowling Green State both have uh, construction management uh, four-year programs, which are really good fundamentally to prepare you to go into the field, but nothing um, nothing uh, short of having some field experience is really going to be is going to serve you you need to find that opportunity whether you're going to a school program or continuing an educational program but finding opportunities to learn the trades and learn how to to work with people and manage the skills that they need to have to produce the projects there are academic programs um, in some of the uh, the uh, community colleges that, that contribute to that opportunity, but at the end of the day, it's going to be a combination of your educational experience and what you can learn in school in terms of the, the technologies and the science of building buildings and, and managing the process, which includes business and accounting and, uh, and people skills and technology skills, but along with that, really understanding the building skills that are um, uh, part of the process and you hit on a very important one that is people skills being able to work with people okay in a supervising uh, capacity or a collaborative uh, capacity at the end of the day that's your job you're working you're working with people in the field you have to understand how people work what are the thing what are the um, incentives that will get people to to do the work that they need to do and be able to communicate that in a way that will uh, get the work done that you need to get done jack you might want to comment the difference between a construction manager and construction management <laughs> um, <laughs> i actually don't know that i would be the one to to best okay. maybe yeah well, uh, yes uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah yeah right um yeah, and, and I think you're right on. In the construction manager position, it, it's a very specific role in that company, uh, where the construction management is more broader, uh, looking at the whole industry um, a, as you go through here. With the construction manager, you need to understand the process and the streamline that you're working on, and a lot of those jobs do come in, come as as Judson said from working through that experience um, as you go through here. Uh, I think another point I'd make is relationships and understanding the work role within the construction environment. Understand who does what and why they do what they do um, because you've got to be able to work with different parties. Um, as Jackie was saying earlier, um, you've got to understand what the electricians do, the plumbers do, and how they all work together to get the job done. We are almost out of time. Let's go back to Glenville, and, and we'll see if we get another question from Glenville, and then uh, Jefferson County, we'll see if we can get back to you for another question. Glenville, you have another question for us? Yes, we do. Yes, one more. Here we go. State your name and ask a question. How are you doing? My name is Desmond Barrett. I am a senior at Glenville High School, and I would like to know 
What exactly is the turnover rate for an apprenticeship? Okay, the rate? I don't know that the I have turnover that. rate for the apprenticeship. Oh, to, oh turnover rate. Yeah. Oh, okay. All Not right. you. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's an interesting question. Yeah, maybe. I, yeah, that sounds like a ball for Glenn to handle. <laughs> Handing off to Glenn. Sure. <laughs> you know, part of it I'd say is going to go uh, wildcat. It, it depends on the uh, trade and the demand for your actual trade or craft. Um, if you're a carpenter, um, as an example, there are a lot the more. The conference is about to end. Carpenter, op a lot of more carpentry opportunities, but it really depends on how much building is going on in the marketplace and where you are. So, as an entry level person, if you're, um, you know, you hope that you're on with an employer that sponsors you and then hires you, and that that employer maintains work. But again, once a building is built, whatever that, if it's a new school, um, that process might take a year and a half. Once that job is over, the company that employs you, you hope also has other contracts, um, other jobs in the pipeline, so you can go from one job directly to another. That doesn't always happen. Um, and so it may not be turnover, it may be that you're what they label sitting on the bench, laid off, not working. Um, until you actually, A, one of two things occur. One, you're with a employer that has lots of projects and works all the time, or B, that the economy is robust enough to support um, continuous opportunities. Uh, but there's really not, um, it's probably more layoff, you know, based on the amount of work that actually takes place in an industry. Okay, good. That was good. Okay. <laughs> Well, we are just about out of time. I want to thank everyone uh, for participating. Uh, schools, you had some great questions for our guests, and uh, hopefully we've provided you with uh, some really good general information and some specific information with regards to uh, what's happening in the construction industry today, whether you want to pursue that actually through the trades and or uh, at the management level. Uh, just keeping in mind, uh, again, that uh, the path that you follow is going to mean additional education, whether it's hands-on job training or additional college education. But, you know, you best uh, can decide that for yourself. And also uh, the resources in your building at the guidance uh, level. And